There's nothing worse than having a heating failure or a problem outdoors right in the peak of winter. And with the cost of living crisis well underway and no sign of it improving anytime soon, I want to help you guys to prevent issues before they arise and to prepare your home for the coming winter. Nice. So let's start by looking at the central heating system. We'll look at ways to prevent future breakdowns on the central heating system, identify faults so that we can get them repaired before the peak of the winter, and ways to optimize your heating system to save money. The hub of the heating system, the boiler. This is where energy comes into your home and it gets converted into hot water for your heating system and for your hot taps. And there's some checks that we need to do on the boiler before winter arrives. The first thing we need to do is check the boiler status and pressure. Over the summer, whilst the boiler's been sat dormant for some time, we need to ensure that there's no problems occurred or any pressure loss. So the first thing to do is take a look at your pressure gauge. On this Worcester Bosch, it's digital. You can see it says there, it's in the green, pressure's okay at one bar. Digital displays on boilers are becoming more and more common, however you'll still find a lot of boilers out there with an old traditional circular pressure gauge and a traditional needle to indicate the bar. You should normally look to have your boiler pressure between 1 bar and 1.5 bar. So if your pressure is too low you can top it up using the filling loop. Now there's a couple of different types of filling loop. This boiler has what we call an internal filling loop and it's located underneath this service cover you're looking for a tap that usually looks something like this. To increase the pressure, simply pull down on the filling loop and you'll hear a hissing sound as water runs into the system. Keep an eye on the pressure gauge until you reach the desired pressure and then let go of the tap. However, on some boilers you may find a little short flexi hose that connects to two isolation taps and you'd need to turn two taps in sequence to allow water into the system and therefore increase the pressure. It's quite common to find those on council properties here in the UK and what often happens is the council remove the hose so that the tenants can't fiddle with the boiler. But a little tip, the hose often gets placed on the top of the boiler where the tenant can't see it. So if you do need to do some adjustments, you might find it up there. Now we know the boiler has pressure and it's turned on, what we're gonna do is call for heat. Now to do that, we'll need to go to the programmer or thermostat. In this case, we have a high thermostat here. We're just gonna turn that up and that will call for heat. And that basically means to ask the boiler to provide hot water into the heating system and in turn, heat the radiators up. So if we turn the target up on the hive, you can see that the heating is now turned on and we're calling for heat. And you can see here that the boiler's responded and we are now supplying heat into the heating system. Now we need to complete this step before the cold weather kicks in because heating engineers will be really, really busy at this time of year and you may end up with no hot water or heating right in the peak of winter. You could end up having to pay a call out fee and it will cost you more money. So make sure you test your boiler nice and early. So that brings me on to radiators, the primary source of heat for most people's homes here in the UK. And one of the parts of our heating system that we need to make sure we optimize so that we don't end up wasting money. So we know our boiler is heating up the water in the system now. And after a few minutes, we should feel the radiators start to heat up. And what you're looking for is the whole radiator panel to heat up with no cold spots in any areas. The most common problem that the homeowner might face come winter is air in the radiators. Well, now if there's air in the radiator because the top of the panel will be cold and the bottom or even right up to the middle will be hot. And that is because air rises to the top and we're not heating up that air, we're just heating up the water in the bottom. So we need to make sure that we go around each radiator and check for air in the radiators. Now air in the radiators can be caused by leaks. So if you continue to have pressure dropping on your boiler or air collecting in your radiators, it's always worth checking for leaks. But air in radiators isn't always a sign of trouble. It can have been introduced in the system if you've had any maintenance work or done any work on the heating system or microscopic bubbles can just end up collecting in the radiators over time. And that is why each year you should go around all of your radiators and bleed them to check check for any air. And that way you're optimizing your heating system and saving money. So let's take a quick look at how to bleed the radiator. 
This is a bleed valve and top tip, make sure the hole in the bleed valve faces away from the wall because if you don't you'll get dirty water all over the paint and you won't be very popular with senior management. This is a radiator bleed key and it's what we're going to use to bleed the radiator. But if you don't have one, everyone has a flathead screwdriver and you can just use one of those instead. Grab something to soak up the water because you will have some water come out of here. Hold that just underneath, grab your bleed key and just turn that bleed key anti-clockwise. And we can just check for any air in the radiator. You can see there I've got water coming out. If you don't have water coming out of yours straight away, you may encounter this noise. You hear that hissing? That is air in the radiator. Once water starts to come out, close the valve back off. Now I've got water coming out of mine straight away, so that tells me there's no air in this radiator. You should now have hot water flowing all the way to the top of the radiator, and it should get nice and hot. So go around your home and do that with all of the radiators, and then recheck the pressure on the boiler, because doing this can drop your pressure and you may need to top it up again. Now there's other common problems that you might encounter when you turn your heating system on for the first time, including cold radiators or poorly balanced radiators. If you've got any of those problems, check out my plumbing playlist where there's bound to be a video to get your radiator working properly again. If the video is helping you to save some money so far and you're enjoying it, make sure you hit the like button for me because that helps the video reach more people and help more people on YouTube. And hit subscribe because you don't want to miss all the videos I've got coming up. And don't forget to check out the membership to the DIY Club. That really helps to support the channel and at the same time gives you guys a load of great perks to help you with your DIY around the house. So hit the join button and check it out. Right, back to the video. So we've looked at the heating system and we're confident that it's working properly. Now what do we need to look at on the exterior of the home? Because that is ultimately where the worst of the weather is going to have its impact. Well the first thing we need to take a look at is outside taps. Like this one that you saw me install a few months back. How can we prevent this from freezing? because if the pipes or fittings freeze, they can split the pipe. And then you'll get a leak, which is gonna be very inconvenient and potentially expensive. So we need to stop that happening. But how are we gonna stop the tap and the pipe that comes through the wall from the inside of the house freezing? Well, there's a little trick. So let me show you. You can see where the pipe for the outside tap passes through the wall. Our cold supply comes in here and passes through this isolation valve. You should have an isolation valve on your outside tap. The first thing you need to do is turn the isolation valve to make sure no water can be supplied to the tap. Now depending on how they are installed, some outside taps will have a drain valve. If yours has a drain valve, you can now go ahead and drain the water from the pipe and the tap so that there'll be no water to freeze inside the pipe. It's that freezing of the water and therefore the expansion within the pipe as the ice expands that splits pipes and joints. But if your outside tap doesn't have a drain, I didn't fit one on this because I just used this simple little trick, turn the tap on, and what that does is allow space for the water to expand. So if you get any freezing, it'll just expand within the pipe and push out of the tap. So you might notice a little bit of ice form on the end of the tap, and that stops the pipe from splitting. And then once the cold weather goes away, you can just turn that isolation valve back on and get using your tap again in the spring. But before you switch off your outside tap for the winter, you need to clear out your gutters. Because as you can see, there's quite a lot of moss and soil and other debris that builds up over the year in your gutter. So every year before the winter, I go around and I clear out all the gutters and make sure that rainwater flows down the downpipe nice and freely. If you don't do that, that can cause damage and damp in your walls and you don't want that in the middle of winter. So let's get these cleared out. You can see these ones are absolutely full of debris. I only bought this house in the spring, so I haven't done these ones yet. And I've got this grimy old job of taking years worth of muck out of all the gutters. I just use a bucket and a small gardening trowel. You can hook the bucket over either the top of your ladder or a little tip for you. You can use your fascia brackets to hang your bucket because you want both hands free so that you don't fall. Worth remembering, if you're doing this on a tall house, get somebody to foot the ladder or hire a tower from your local hire place because you don't want to go falling off the ladder. So be very careful if you're doing this job. Now, use your shovel to just clear out 
all of that muck and grime. Nice. So I've cleared all the big lumps of moss and debris and soil and leaves and anything else out of the gutter and now all I'm going to do is rinse it out with the hose pipe. So you can see I'm rinsing all of that out with the hose pipe and at the same time I'll then be able to see that it drains nicely down the downpipe. Now whilst you've got access to the roof this is a good time to check for any damage to any tiles or any roof repairs that might need doing before the winter because the last thing you want is to leave them until it's bitterly cold and then you have to get up here in the wind on a ladder on a freezing cold day. So guys let me know is there anything that you normally do as part of your winter prep that I've missed in this video. Drop it in the comments if there is, because that helps everyone. And I hope I've helped you to save some money and you found this video helpful. If I have, check out one of these because there's so much more to learn and I'll see you guys in the next one.